Yeah, it's a Commodore 64. So what? But hold on, that keyboard doesn't look right. It's flashing? What's this thing? It's not a Commodore 64. Oh, it's a Raspberry Pi. Plugged into a USB hub and some relay controller. Looks like it's got an external cable going to the SD card so you can change the operating system. And does that look like it's actually been 3D printed? Yes, it has. It's a 3D printed Commodore 64 clone running on a Raspberry Pi. Let's check it out. Okay, what kicked off this project was finding this keyboard on eBay. It looks a bit like um, the Commodore 64 keyboard, at least, at least in terms of the overall dimensions. So I produced a alternative uh, backing plate for it to fit into the project. And the keys that are missing are the keys that you need to remove to take the screws out to remove it from the original case and attach it to the backing plate that's 3D printed and that transparent thing is the flashing color thing that uh, I originally took out but decided to put back in just for good cause it's just for fun. So now I'm just going to stick the keys back in. It's also important with a project like this to uh, to work quickly as you can see. The, uh, the files for this project are on Thingiverse and I've provided a link below. Okay let's get started with the case. The 3D printer build volume uh, used here was quite small, uh, about uh, 1100 by 1200 mil by um, 1000, sorry, 100 high. So you really only need a basic printer, and this project will be just fine. As you can see, it uh, is designed to break up to uh, uh, relatively small pieces, and it has tabs that connect into slots that allow the uh, the all the different pieces to be super glued together. One of the reasons I've done this is I hate getting rid of support. So this whole project is designed without any requirement for support. A huge time saving when it comes to uh, assembling something as complicated as this. Basically you work from left to right. Start by joining the edge pieces together. Use the tabs. The edge pieces actually have a little screw and bolt just to uh, make sure they're extra secure and then start using the tabs to insert them into the slots make sure they fit correctly uh, a bit of sanding may be required just to make sure everything fit ni fits nicely then glue the slot into the uh, into the piece then the next section comes along and you just keep doing the same thing until you get to the other end it's pretty straightforward cue the music is done. Okay, I've pre-assembled it, so now I'm pulling it apart to glue it together properly. I just use super glue. Uh, that uh, works fine. Uh, there's, uh, I think the PLA plastic used in 3D printing is, is very uh, tolerant to most adhesives, um, and basic super glue works just fine. So this is basically the same as approach as last time, except we've got the two different sections above and below the uh, keyboard area and we've also got the uh, the non-functional function keys on the right they're a part of the 3D print file set and they're just ins inserted and uh, you'll see how that slots in 
in a moment. But yeah, as you can see, it's the same basic process as before. Cue the music. Let's screw it together just to make sure everything fits. You may want to drill out the holes beforehand just to make sure the screws take. And now let's put the uh, the keyboard in to see if that fits. Again, just we'll just drill out the holes, make sure everything's lined up, and start screwing it together. Yep, as you can see, it's it's starting to look like a Commodore 64. There we go. Unfortunately I wasn't happy with the overall finish of it. The uh, joins weren't particularly well lined up. Maybe that's a reflection of my printer, I don't know, but um, I just wasn't happy with the overall appearance of it. Um, so I wasn't going to leave it in the raw 3D printed state. So to tidy things up and also give it a coat of paint, I added um, some sandable primer, the uh, sort that you get from the uh, hardware store. I actually use leftovers from an automotive project. So as you can see, I've uh, given it a bit of a squirt of uh, the sandable primer and sanded it away just to, uh, to fill in the gaps and to uh, just get a better overall finish. Okay, after another round of sanding and putting on some more sandable primer, uh, I got to the point where I thought it was ready for paint and all I did was use um, some uh, grey paint rather than the traditional brown. I thought that would go a little bit better with the keyboard and it was just what was uh, available at the local uh, auto shop. So yeah, so unfortunately I've lost the video of the uh, the painting process but it's nothing um, exceptional in, in terms of complexity. It's just give it a squirt. I'm sure there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to uh, use a rattle can to to paint something and that's really all I did. Let's have a look inside. We've got a Raspberry Pi 3B with the power, HDMI and audio accessible from the back. I've got a cable taking the SD card making it externally available so you can change the operating system. I've had an external relay board so I control external devices but that's certainly not required and I've got a USB hub for whatever devices you want to run. I'm using a 3.3 volts off the GPIO to run the power LED. These cables control the external devices on my relay board and that's basically it. I've also printed the Petsky character set on some adhesive labels and cut them up and stuck them on the keys. And here it is, running Combian 64, the Commodore 64 emulator. I tried a number of the other emulators, but uh, Combian 64 certainly uh, seemed to be the most reliable, so I'm using that. As a result of the external SD card, changing the operating system is just a matter of changing the SD card. So uh, changing over to something like RetroPie and turning it into a retro gaming console, or simply uh, changing it to the Raspberry Pi operating system um, is certainly an option. I use the uh, Raspberry Pi operating system to control the external Red, uh, relay controller, um, as well as of course um, a few uh, retro games with the uh, Retro Pi. So it's not just a Commodore 64; it's turned into quite a versatile little unit. Hopefully, you like it. Like and subscribe. Thank you very much.